Hi, in this video we're going to talk about writing a class. So how do you write a class? Well there's a lot of things to do but here's a, basically a step-by-step -step guide that gives you some of the biggest components. So first you have to figure out what defines this class. What are the attributes that all things in the class share? Then you have to figure out what are the types and names of those attributes. Three, you want to figure out how do we create an object of that class. And four, you want to figure out what is the behavior that this class should have. So let's talk about writing the student class. First, we want to know what are the attributes that all students share. Well, a student has a first name, a last name, and a grade level. And you can see in the image below, I'm using this to populate our template of the student class. And then we want to ask, how do we store attributes of a class? Well, to do that, we use instance variables. So introducing instance variables, a variable defined in a class for which each object of the class has its own copy or instance. So these attributes are also called instance variables or fields. Now we have to figure out what the types are for those fields. So let's say we want to store information for a student. Well, the first name of the student is a string. The last name of the student is a string and the grade level of the student is an int. And so the instance variables, the way that we'll write them is we'll say private string first name, private string last name, and private int grade level. The reason we have private is because these instance variables, we just want to keep them, you know, we want to keep them within our class. We want to keep them protected. So here is uh, Ada, the student object and Alan, the student object. And you can see they both have their own copies of these instance variables. They have their own copies. That's why each instance has a version. Ada is an instance, Alan is an instance. They both have a first name, but the actual values of their first name are different. That's the key point about an instance variable. Each object of the class, each instance, has its own version. And to repeat, each object or instance of the class has its own values for the instance variables. Alan and Ada both have a grade level, but they are in different grades. Now let's look at the instance variables for rectangle. Right now we have a rectangle with a width and a height. And for now, we'll just say that the uh, width is an int and the height is an int. So we write private int width, private int height. The next question to create a class is to ask, how do we create new objects? And to do this, we're going to introduce constructors. Constructors help you create new objects of a class and set the initial values of our instance variables. So here I want to show you what the rectangle constructor looks like. Basically, we're saying that we're going to pass in a width and a, and a height, and we're going to set those instance variable values from that width and that height. It's important to note that we can also initialize the value of instance variables without a constructor. If a class does not have a constructor written, Java allows us to use the noArgument constructor to create an object for the class. If the instance variables have not already been initialized, Java will initialize them with default values. In this example, the rectangle.java class does not have a constructor. When we create a new rectangle object in myprogram.java, we are able to use the noArgument constructor even though the class does not have one written. When we print out the values of width and height after constructing a new rectangle object, we can see that the value of width and height have been initialized to zero by Java. And then in, in all of our classes, we'll have a toString. A toString is a method on a class that returns a string representation of your object. And this is what gets printed to the screen when we print out the object uh, with print line. So with this information, let's go write our classes. Okay, so first we're gonna write our rectangle class. So this is our rectangle tester from earlier, and we're gonna go and fill in rectangle.java. So to start off, we write public class rectangle. The first thing to note is that the name of the class, rectangle, needs to match the name of the file, rectangle.java. So first we'll set up our instance variables, private int width and private int height, because every rectangle has its own width and height. So we'll say 
These are the instance variables. Okay, next, let's create our constructor. So a constructor is a special looking method. So you write public rectangle. There's no return type here. So then we'll say int rect width, int rect height. For now, the names of the parameters to our constructors will be different than our instance variables. They'll be different than our instance variables. What we'll do in our constructor is we'll initialize the instance variables to the values passed in. So we'll say width equals rect width and height equals rect height. Okay, and so with this, we should be able to run our program. Okay, and you can see it prints out something funny, and that's because we haven't yet defined a toString. So now let's define our toString, and we'll say public string toString. We'll say return rectangle with width of width and height plus height. And when we're using width and height here, those are going to print out the instance variables for this class. So if we rerun that, we'll see it prints out the specific information for each rectangle object. And so this is the, the simplest version of a class. Um, we can add more and will add more in, in future videos. Now let's write the student constructor. So the first thing we do is we write public class student. And let's set our instance variables. So we'll say a student has a first name, a student has a last name, and a student has a grade level. And then we'll write our constructor. And we'll say public student. And the constructor that we're going to write uh, will take a first name, a last name, and a grade level. And so remember, our constructor is a special method. It says public and then the class name, so public student. There's no return type. And what we'll do is in the constructor, we'll initialize the values of our instance variable. So we'll say first name equals f name, last name equals l name, and grade level equals grade. So just to reiterate this point from earlier, these are the names of the instance variables. These are the names of the parameters that are passed in to create the new object. For now, make sure they're named differently. Make sure they're named differently when you set them equal, when you set the value of the instance variable, it's gonna take on what's passed in to this constructor. You, you don't want to have, use the same name. You can use the same name later, and we'll introduce a way that you can do that um, later in this unit. But for now, make sure the instance variables are named different than the parameters to the constructor. So with this, we should be able to run the code. Great, and to make this uh, printout a little bit more useful, we'll write a toString, public string toString, and we'll say return, um, We'll say first name plus space and then last name plus in grade plus grade level. So if we rerun the code, we'll see we get something more informative for each of the students. And so this is how we write our first class. We create the class. We set up the instance variables. We initialize those instance variables in our constructor and we create a two string so we can get something informative when we print out the objects.